you did not just stumble on this video. It is God that brought you here because God wants you to hear this thing that I want to say today. It's going to encourage you. It's going to help you. I was going through my study in Genesis. I was just reading, actually. Let me not say I was in a study. I was reading. Then God brought this revelation to me. I did not even get through the fifth verse when I got this. And then it just changed my mindset. It just changed everything. And this is what I believe. Like just starting from the end of that revelation before I go deep into that scripture is you understanding that God can use anything. Even right now, God can use this video to bless your life and lift that heavy weight and that heavy burden out of your heart. Like even the things that are inconveniencing you right now, the hurt, the pain, the disappointment, the rejection, everything that you are going through and anything that is happening to you right now, God can use it for your good. Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. I'll pause there. God called light when there was darkness, and then the light actually shone and overwhelmed the darkness. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness night. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the first day. On the first day of creation, God used something unusual for good that benefits humans the same darkness was covering the earth while the earth was formless and this is what came to me in this verse 4 god saw that the light was good then god said i'm not done with you darkness come here god separated the light from the darkness and used the darkness he called the darkness night how is the darkness useful the night that God called, used darkness to call, is a night that we get to use to rest. God knew that us humans would need a time to rest. So God separated the darkness from the light and called the darkness night. This is why when it gets to the night, our body recognizes that it is time for rest. It is time to sleep. No matter how much you want to do night duty, your body just wants, it wants to sleep. So it is because God used the darkness. Hey. I don't know if this thing is hitting you like it did hit me. God used the darkness. This is when I got to this point, it made me realize that God can use anything. If God could use the darkness at the beginning to make night, which is beneficial for us humans, there's nothing in our life that God cannot use. There's no rejection. There's no disappointment. Mm -mm. There's no loss. There's no grief. There's nothing at all that happens to us that God cannot use for his glory and for our good. If God used the darkness, that is that is just the line that hit me. I don't know what you're going through right now in your life, but if God could use the darkness in the beginning, darkness covered the face of the waters. God introduced light. I would have thought to myself that after God introducing light, God would do away with the darkness and never have anything to do with darkness again. But then God actually called out for the darkness, separated it from the light and used it for something beneficial for us. This is the encouragement I just want to give you. Whatever it is that is happening with you, God can use it and God will use it for your good, for his glory. It didn't just stop here. After having to get that revelation, then Bible passages started coming up of how God has used something that was unlikely, unusual for the benefit of his people and for his glory. In the book of Daniel, we have these three Hebrew boys that we talk about them. These three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fire, expected to die. Something unusual happened that the fire that was meant to burn them and kill them only burned the ropes that bound them. So it means that even when mm, we go through difficult situation, God can use it to purify us and take out everything that does not belong with us, that God doesn't want to be in us. Take out the anger, take out the rage, take out the pride, take out everything and strip us of everything that he does not want so that he can have us to himself, humble and ready for his purpose. The three Hebrew boys here, the ropes that they were bound with, the fire burned those ones, but they were found in the fire walking freely. What was meant to destroy them, they are walking freely as if they are in a place with AC inside fire. <laughs> to me, this is what I thought. I don't know if this is blessing you, but if it, if it is, drop a comment and let me know which part of the video is beneficial to you. I was thinking, wouldn't have God quench the fire? Because I was like, I love the drama. So I would have loved to be like, 
Nebuchadnezzar told the people to increase the fire and make it hotter seven times because these people didn't want to bow to the gods that he made. And God would have been like, immediately they increased the fire, the fire would quench totally and they would not be able to do anything. That was my man, the drama. <laughs> but God is like, no, I'm not dealing with the drama. This is a work of power. I made fire and I can make it lose its effects. So then these ones, I want to show you that I've made them to become fire, flames of fire too because they are walking in the fire the people that threw these three hebrew men or boys because they were actually teenagers and youth the people that threw them into the fire the wind of that fire killed these guys these aft guys super amazing that the ones that were thrown into the midst of the fire were walking god made the fire lose its effects this goes to prove that god can use anything god can use what was meant to kill you to make you become the best version of you. God can make what was meant to destroy your life to become something that you use for his glory and become something of purpose to you in your life. I don't know what it is. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know who needs this. I don't know who you are watching. You can let me know in the comments if this message is for you and if you are receiving the message and what God has used, even the things you've been through to do in your life, if you're someone that has gone through this before. Joseph is another example in the book of Genesis chapter 39. Joseph had a dream when he was a teenager of God showing him what his life would look like, but without details. So now Joseph is here and his journey of suffering started. His brother hated him and they threw him out of the house, sold as a slave to the land of Egypt, faced a lucrative and luring temptation from Potiphar's wife who said, come and sleep with me. I'm going to give you everything. Come and execute the promise of God in your life and get this small things that i'm going to give you and forfeit everything that you have for your future and joseph said no i'm not going to take this it looks lucrative it looks luring you are a beautiful woman but i'm not going to take this lucrative opportunity and this luring temptation and abandon my future abandon the purpose of god for my life so joseph was lied upon and thrown into prison for doing something good but then it was all a setup because he needed to be in the prison i don't know what you are going through that God allowed you to go through because you needed to be there for God to bring you to the place that he wants to take you to. From that prison was where Joseph was removed to the palace. It was not just an ordinary prison. It was a prison that prisoners from the king's palace were thrown to. So it was a strategy. It was strategic. It was a setup. And how amazing, mind-blowing, and unexpected that Joseph would get from the prison to the palace. Hmm? If not that, this is God orchestrating his life. I believe that in the process of your life, God is orchestrating things in your life that you do not even know. Because in Joseph's life, he did not even know what God was orchestrating in his life. He did not even know what God was even doing. He did not have a single idea of what God, of what God was doing in his life. So if you would have asked Joseph, what dream do you have for the next five years of your life? He's like, I'm in this prison. I'm just trusting God. I trust in God. I'm going to wait on you. I trust in your goodness. So it's like, I don't know what is ahead, but I trust God. He knows what is ahead of me. At this point, Joseph had gotten to a place of faith that I'm not going to let go of God, no matter what happens. And that's what I want you to embrace. God is orchestrating things in your life with even the things that happened to you that he did not cause, but he allowed because he wants to use it all for your good. And for his glory this is one important thing i want to touch on for christians as christians we have been conditioned to want to escape suffering as if god did not ever promise that we will go through suffering but jesus never said that jesus said in this life you face tribulation i don't know if they don't really prepare us or maybe they just want to motivate us to come to god even when we are not ready to like give him our heart for who he is god did not promise us that we will not go through suffering or tribulation or persecution or rejection or disappointment or anything like that the only thing god promised is that he is with us he, he didn't leave us alone but he said we should be of good cheer because we are already overcomers through whatever thing we are going to go through or through whatever thing we've been through god can use it and we are already overcomers this is why paul could say in romans chapter 8 what shall separate us from the love of god shall tribulation shall pain shall peril he named a lot of things he said no nothing nothing on earth 
can separate us. Nothing in heaven can separate us from the love of God. God loves us so much that we cannot be severed from his love. And because he loves us that much, he will not allow something bad that would destroy us to happen to us because he loves us. So if he allows anything to happen to us, it means he is going to use it. And this is me telling you, for God to allow the discomfort, it means even the discomfort has a purpose. Even the disappointment has a purpose. Even the displeasure has a purpose. Even the rejection has a purpose. Even the pain has a purpose. Even the regret, whatever it is that you feel like, oh, this happened, that happened. It all has a purpose and the purpose will only bring you to the best and what God has designed for you. Now, this is something that I know that sometimes we do not look at the power of God using anything. If God could use two fish and five loaves of bread, we read the Bible, it seems like we read and we don't believe. But if God could, could use five loaves and two fish to feed 5,000 and more, which is approximately 20,000 with the women and the children, because they were not counted amongst these 5,000, it means, wow, there's nothing that God cannot use to bless you, to lift you, to take you up, to lift you to the place that he wants you to be. And this is my thought. Here's my submission. When I read the scripture, that the Bible says that God works everything out for our good. That is Romans chapter 8 verse 28. It says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Here's what I believe. If God allows it, he is going to use it. If it's not going to be for our good, God will not allow it. If God allows anything, because it says God causes everything, not some things, not one thing, not two things. It said everything. It means if God allows anything to happen to you, if God allows you to go through any process, if God allows you to walk through any path in life, it means God is definitely going to use it. If God is not about to use it for your good, God will not allow it. That is why God saves us from some situations. That is why God delivers us from some situations because he's not interested in using those situations to help us. He's not interested in using those situations to bring us to a better place. That's why he makes us escape those ones. But if you are going through anything and you did not escape it, God is going to use it. You just have to be sensitive and know what is God doing in this season of my life because I'm not going to stop trusting him. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I hope that this is a blessing to you. I hope that this did not waste your time. And let me know in the comment section which part of this video really encouraged you. I'm so grateful to have you watch today's video. Let me know in the comments and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are here to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more of content like this. And let me know, bring questions you want to ask and let's have a conversation in the chat in the comments if you are someone that have been through things that god has used to bring you to a place of blessing i want you to share in the comments to encourage someone that is reading let them know that even the pain they are going through right now god can use it for their best interest for their good and for his glory if it's a weekend if it's a weekday if it's the beginning of the week if it's a midweek have a blessed time and enjoy yourself in the presence of the lord amen